Hi everybody, another tutorial for you again today. Today I'm going to look at one of the basics of card handling known as a spread, how to do it in the hand and on the table. And then afterwards I'll teach you a trick that uses that as well as a principle known as a key card, which is quite a devastating effect. So, what is a spread? I'm sure you've all seen magicians go, pick a card, any card. And the way they might do it could be using a fan, which I'll talk about in the later tutorial, or a spread. And sometimes they might do it in the hands, sometimes they might spread them on the table. Okay? So, it's important to be able to do the one in the hands right, because it also opens up lots of later on moves, like coals, which we're not going to look at today. But if you don't get the handling for a spread right, some of the later stuff becomes quite a lot harder. So, let's go over the shoulder and talk about how to do a spread. Okay, then. so a spread is really straightforward. Okay, see how I'm going through the cards here, nice and slowly. First off, I want you to think of an accordion. That's how I think of it. Think of this motion. Okay, it's exaggerated for effect, but the basic principle is correct. You're going to do that with the cards. And the way you're going to hold them, whichever hand you prefer, so if, it's your, if this is your starting hand, get your index finger, put it on top, your pinky below, to help cradle and support everything. Okay. The other hand, just the little fingers needed to cradle at the bottom. The other fingers are going to go underneath. And as I push off a few, I come out, I come in, I come out. And you can spread it with a bit of practice quite wide because your finger's underneath. Because what's happening is this. And you can even spread past your fingers because the cards on top of each other will support each other. So you can say to a person, pick a card. I'll try and do it from the other hand. Now I always do it this way around, but we'll give it a go from the other hand. I don't think I've ever done it that way around. But see, uh, the idea still remains. You just push and come up. So if I wanted to go to somebody pick a card, any card, I would be, which one would you like? And they can then touch a card, take a card or whatever. Now, when you're doing it on a table, it's known as a ribbon. And you can do it face down. Or you can do it face up. Face up's good because it shows the cards normally for a reveal at the end of a trick. So how do you do that then? This one, first off, it doesn't really work on a table as easily. This one's a wooden effect, it's not too bad. But if you were to try it on, say, a polished desk like a school table, it does not work. On something like a magician's mat, or on the floor, or on your bed, or whatever, it works lovely. Or on a tablecloth, if it's a fairly heavy one, you just, so you're going to put them there, and you're going to pull them across with a nice smooth motion. And you're gradually going to open up your hand a little bit as you go. It's something you'll very easily get a feel for. If there are a newer deck of cards, it's easier. Older decks tend to stick together a bit. This deck's very new. Okay. And with pr it is that simple. Now, what's fun about a ribbon is you have a couple of options. You can do a curved one. Or a straight one. You can also flourish. So what's quite good fun is if you make a nice one and you take a finger and put it under the end, try to do it slowly, and you lift, watch what happens. They all turn over. You can also do it using a card. So you could be like so. And if you want to have a bit of fun with it, this takes a bit of patience, a bit of timing to get right. But you can, oh, not best spread, do a cool little visual effect. As you'll see, there's a little kind of wave 
if you put your finger on it, you can go back and forth. They do eventually fall apart, but it looks cool while you're doing it. If you feel really confident, you can have a go at going all the way and then all the way back again. So that's a ribbon spread. Okay. Right, so today's trick, you're going to see it from the spectator, uh, from the, my angle, but this trick's really angle free. So you have a few options. You get a deck of cards, and this one, you can say, take a card. Any card you like, and they can take a card. And then you can just be quite casually. I'm showing you the dirty, and I'm exaggerating, so help me teach you in a minute. Or you can do it this way. So while they're talking, you're going to want to look at the cards. I'll show you why. So if we just take it easy and do it the simple way. They've taken a card. I'm talking to them. I put the cards down. I say, la-di-la. -la. Is this the first time you see a card trick? What kind of tricks do you like? la di la di la And I say to them, right, I'm not going to do any more. Put your cards on top of there for me. And then cut the cards. And they reach over and they cut. This is a cut. And then they complete the cut. They can do this as many times as they like. So imagine that the spectator's doing it, not me. And then you go, right, okay. Now, if you're doing this in the lockdown era, you obviously you can't go up to them and hold the hand or anything, but there's two ways to present the finale for this trick. First, you do a ribbon spread. Now, you can do it one of two ways. You can do what's called the Geiger counter, Okay, you go. Or you can do it with the hands. I quite like it that way. You get the heat and you feel, if they've held the card close to themselves, you can feel the heat from them and feel the heat on the card. But all you do with a bit of showmanship is you gradually go back and forth to your Geiger counter or your hand or remove some of the cards. Oh no, it's not those. Oh, no, 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 it's not over there, oh. I'm feeling some heat now. And I'm telling you, even though you couldn't see it, and I'll show you why in a minute, it's, that's their card. So, let's do it as a proper practice. So, they pick a card, any card. That's the card we're looking for. We can't see it because they're the spectator, but just to help you explain the principle. Talk, 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 talk. Cut. 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 However many, they can do as many as they want. Spread. Do the Geiger counter or the heat thing. Gradually removing some until we get to, ultimately, we know that that's their card. So how do we know that? It's all to do with a concept called a key card, knowing one card, where it is in the deck, that is not theirs. So, in this case, we took the easiest option, the bottom card. Now, the problem with the bottom card is they might see you look at it and figure this out. So, this doesn't work well for people who quite like figuring out tricks, but you can just use the bottom one, have a little glimpse, and then talk. You need to spend some time talking away from the deck so they forget you've looked, taken what's called a peek at the bottom card. Now, if I wanted to do it a bit more carefully, I would instead make a little opening called a break. I would get a peek at this card. Do you reckon spades? Okay. And I would talk for a minute. Okay, yeah, da -da -da -da. And then I would cut to the table. See, that's going to the bottom. I go, right, whack your card in the middle. No, I'm sorry, whack your card on top of there and then cut on top. So again, I've gone a little break. It doesn't matter what card. I take a random break. I get a little peek. They're looking at their card. I know I've got the two of hearts, see? And I just go, okay. Whack it on top, cut. Now when they cut, they are going to put my card on top of their card. And as long as they only ever cut the cards, it will always 
always be together. The worst thing that you'd worry about is, well, what if I cut them? one card's here? Doesn't matter. Think of the cards like a circle. So if you see, what was it, the two of hearts here, you know their card is here. Doesn't matter. But that's how the trick's done. The rest is just practice and showmanship. It's quite an old trick. It's a very good beginner's one because it's you know, one you can focus on your presentation, your patter is the term, and how to spread and ribbon. There you go, Vinny. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that fun. See you next time. Bye.